Hello and welcome back to the Unforced Error. Uh, we're here this evening to recap uh, round one of the Australian Open. We're just going to have a look at some of the highlights and maybe the lowlights of uh, some players. We're not going to go through uh, every game. There's so much going on in round one and, uh, you know, uh, we'll just try and uh, kind of pick about the main talking points and look forward to round two. Um, I think the main, just two things uh, for me that came out of round one. First off is that there was no major surprises, but... I was thinking about the nature of surprises and you know what's a surprise to you isn't a surprise to me and when people say oh it's a shock that someone uh, gets knocked out in the first round I always think it's important to be that it's put into context of who they played Um, you know on paper if you're a certain caliber player a first round loss is uh, inexcusable or, or not good enough in, in when it comes to a major but when you play another world class player and you're in a good game and you lose I think I'm not saying that eases the pain going forward but I think you know for us as fans and looking at the results a lot of us are looking at the results uh through the night uh at this stage um it's important to put into context uh who they played and how they played in that game um one thing as well that came for me is the nature of comebacks not just from injury but back into form and how tough that is and how maybe non-linear that is um for a lot of people um, so we'll talk about that um, uh, shortly as well. I've done two uh, written pieces uh, to accompany this as well and I'll leave them in the notes. One is about the two reigning champions and kind of their chances of going forward and one is about the kind of the return of Naomi Osaka and her match against Caroline Garcia which Caroline Garcia ultimately won. Um, so I'll leave them in the show notes. We won't talk too much about those uh, characters um, as well here. One thing I did note from uh, round one, so Coco Goff, Anzibur, Arena Sabalenka, some of the kind of highest seeded players in the women's draw all got done in uh, just over an hour. Uh, some of them had a relatively easy um, first round. Iga Swiatek, on the other hand, played Sophia Kennan in a great game where she ultimately came out of and had a much kind of tougher contest. I often wonder, you know, Iga in the past has gone through maybe to the second week uh, without breaking the sweat and you know I've always wondered is that good for her and I don't think it's a definitive answer you know competitiveness um, at the start of the tournament you know some players just need that extra energy at the end and you know the less time on court the better but you know I think Iga now has got a great uh, a first round under belt has got the legs movers had to work things out gone through a few problems already oftentimes she's come to a semi-final or a final and not have to dealt with adversely and oftentimes she seems kind of panicked in those moments and it's just lack due to a lack of uh, being there before I think she handles them uh, very well and if we forget how young she is as well um, but it'd just be interesting to watch you know those three players I'd imagine will go far enough into the tournament that when it comes to those kind of key moments um would they have benefited of more um kind of early on pressure now of course it depends how they go um in the future uh, in these next week as well as well um the other thing i thought was interesting is to pass is trying out a new serve and he's um kind of tried it just before um the tournament and he's kind of sometimes he's going back to his old serve but it's just really interesting to watch someone experiment on on the big stage in real time and uh I wonder what the philosophy is behind it, but that's worth a watch. Um, Pavlia Chenkova, I just thought, is a player who we don't talk about enough. Uh, beat Donna Vekic uh, in the first round. And Pavlia Chenkova is a great player and always seems to uh, knock out another big player. And because maybe she's not seated as high as she, she might be, always gets uh, in, in, in great uh, early round games there. Von Drusa, the Wimbledon champion, I think if there is an upset, this is it. Um, got knocked out to the Ukrainian uh, Yasna Streka. Um, Yasna Streka played very, very well. Um, her variety and the way she kind of picked out shots was very impressive. Von Drusova, um, it's hard to know how to uh, diagnose this loss. Um, she won Wimbledon last year, had a good kind of second half of the year for all intents and purposes. Didn't start off this year great, obviously, but, um, you know, winning winning a major can do funny things to people you know some people kind of are not satisfied but 
kind of have a relief off their shoulder and kind of feel right I can relax now for a bit or you know I've 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 done what I dream of so what, what do you what do you aspire to next interested in talking or um not I wasn't talking to Coco Goff but in her uh, press conferences um you know she was asked about you know how did the US Open last year you know change her mindset coming into this is her first major as having won a major in the past and she said not really you know because when I was younger I didn't dream of winning one I dreamt of winning a few and you know that just shows how her mindset is uh, going forward but um yeah tough uh, for Ron Drusova but all credit to the Ukrainian um who hit a lot of winners and uh, has a great all-round game it's worth watching her going forward um the Aussie Tomjanovic uh, had a great game last night against Martic uh played very very well um had Admaya be Frutova um, I thought she played uh, extremely well in a typical uh, long game as had Admaya often is in she had such a, a variety shot playing with a lot more confidence and uh, uh, using the drop shot more and she's kind of flicking her wrist and I don't want to emulate it but she played a few shots where she just flicked the, the wrist while her opponent was at the back of the court and made her run everywhere and it was just really impressive um, as first rounds go First round losses, uh, we have to talk about Andy Murray who lost to Echeverry. Again, this is one of those situations where I think, you know, first round loss is tough and, and Andy Murray is tough on himself anyway. But Echeverry is a great player. We've talked about the Argentinians before and we'll be talking about them again. Um, Amazing player and uh, ultimately for Murray, you know, he talked about this could be his last time at the Australian Open. Again, all credit to him, still playing with a metal hip. Um, so I, I think it's always <laughs> worth reiterating that. Um, but he he wasn't he wasn't up for it like he usually was, and uh, uh, it was tough to see. But as I said, came up against a great player, um, Paula Badassa. Um, after a lot of injuries, played Taylor Townsend and absolutely hit her off the court. So that's one of the comebacks where uh, it's it's going to be worth watching going forward because um, she played really well. That that was a really kind of energetic game two great players there was on one of the outside courts and uh paula Belosa, um you know if she can get back to the form she was in uh pre-injury uh she's going to make a lot of waves this year as well uh rubikina played a great game against pliskova rubikina seems to be using a lot more aggression i know often she's kind of on the on defense um but she seems to be kind of taking the initiative a bit more and kind of has a kind of using the lines a bit more and she's not missing uh, so far and Pliskova is a great player um, uh, so on the men's side Zverev won, Dimitrov won Dimitrov won well having a nice streak at the minute uh, as I spoke about four Iga uh, beat Sofia Kennan Sofia Kennan a great player again another one first round loss what are you doing but you're playing Iga Shvitek and again tennis is tough like that she had a, a while out of the court out of the courts and uh, is not seeded now so you know uh, it's it's really tough you really see sometimes when a player comes back like that the, the value of being seeded higher um so i think there there's a there's the main uh talking points uh from uh round one anyway uh round two in terms of tomorrow we've got mira andreva and onzi burr should be uh quite a game to watch a uh, variety of styles and Mira Andreva is a big fan of Anzu Burr. She's only 16 years old and uh, Anzu Burr has talked in her press conference about the kind of nature of that situation. Um, but that's going to be a really interesting game of styles and creativity there um, and worth watching. I think it's going to be worth watching just in general, the Aussies. Uh, Dimonor plays An Arnaudi. Um, ben Shelton plays Christopher O'Connell. Um, Novak plays Alexander Popperin. And I think that's a game to watch. Um, Novak's had a tough first round, um, and just it's it's great seeing the home crowd get behind um, their players. And uh, another great game I think to watch is Monfi uh, against Etchferry. Um, I think that would be a great game. Iga and Daniela Collins uh, as well, and Tomjanovic against Ostapenko. Um, so that's it really for round one. Looking forward to round two. Um, hope you're all keeping well. Hope you're trying to get some sleep. As I said, um, there's two articles I will uh, link in the show notes there uh, if you have any interest. All right, see you soon.